Okay, so this is my review on the Reggae Modal or YCC Team third-party controller for the Nintendo Switch. Not really sure how to pronounce this brand, uh, but I'll just say RM for short. Uh, I had this for a little bit over a month now, and for how much I paid for this thing, I think it is a really good cheap budget controller for the Switch. I first came across this controller when I was just browsing Amazon for some uh, cheap Switch controllers. Never heard of the brand, didn't look it up on YouTube uh, or did any research, but I saw the price was good, had decent Amazon ratings, so I made an impulse buy. To this day, I still don't really know anything about this company, but apparently they also made a few other Switch controllers as well. But the thing is, when I tried to look up this controller on Amazon today, I just can't find the listing anymore. So maybe this company just kind of disappeared, and now they're probably being rebranded as the YCC Team Controller, because they do look almost identical and uh, all the specs are exactly the same as well. The one I have here is the 2021 edition. I don't really know what's new about it or what's different between this one and the previous versions, but uh, yeah, apparently this one is the latest and the greatest model. At the time I bought this controller for around $20 with tax, but I think during even the Prime Day sales I saw these can go for as low as $15. Now I never had an official Switch Pro controller by the way, so I can't really make comparisons to that if that was what you were looking for. So I can only speak on this controller alone or even compare it to my DualShock 4 controller. So first off with the design, it's made to pretty much resemble exactly what the official Switch Pro controller looks like and how it's supposed to feel in the hand. It's pretty big and feels very comfortable in my hands. Even if you have bigger hands, you shouldn't have a problem with this controller. I can pretty much just fully grip this controller and all my fingers land perfectly where the buttons and the joysticks are located. It's made of all black plastic and it also has these unique flower and scale designs near the rotors and they add some nice texture to the overall grip. The back side near the charging port has this diamond design going on and underneath the controller it's basically plain except for the dotted texturing on the grips and these two little parts here where the middle fingers rest. Uh, what I really like though is that this controller charges through USB-C and if I remember correctly I think it did come with a charging cable but I just never used it because I already had a bunch of other USB-C cables which work just fine. It also has a player indicator light on the front as well as a sync button near the charging port at the back. Uh, which I will get into later what that's used for. The build quality is excellent for this controller, uh, which was really surprising to me given uh, the cost of this controller, but it feels very solid, doesn't really have any flex, very minimal creaking even when uh, pressure is applied to it. Compared to my DualShock 4 controller for example, I would say the DualShock 4 is built a tiny bit better and feels more solid, but only slightly. Even this RM controller feels a lot sturdier and better built than the DualShock 3. The A, B, X, Y buttons are pretty big and easy to press, and they have pretty good feedback too, although they can feel a little bit mushy at times. The same kind of goes with the shoulder buttons, although the triggers are more of a, just a regular button uh, rather than actual triggers like seen in the DualShock and Xbox controllers. The joysticks I found to be just decent, but not great. Uh, they are pretty tall, so they are pushed more at an angle, but I found them to be a little bit too sensitive, and the joysticks can sometimes be a little loose feeling, and because of that, it kind of makes my aim not the most accurate uh, when I'm gaming. But in other games like Smash or whatever, uh, these joysticks will work just fine. The clicking on the joysticks feels pretty good though and has a nice satisfying click to them. The d-pad I also found to be just okay, but I think it will work fine for most people. It's a little bit big and clunky feeling, and the buttons just feel a little bit awkward to press for me. It also has plus and minus buttons, as well as a dedicated screenshot and home button, just like the official Switch controller. Uh, but when I was first using this controller, sometimes I would not know which button is which, 
For example, sometimes I would want to press the minus button, but instead I might hit the screenshot button by accident. But over time, as I've gotten more used to it and where the buttons are located, these mistakes don't really occur that frequently anymore. The controller also has rumble, which is okay, uh, but it's not as good as the rumble like in the DualShock or Xbox controller. I left mine on just because it doesn't really annoy me too much, but I feel like some people might even disable it if it becomes too irritating. The rumble in this controller is more of a light vibration, more similar to a smartphone vibration than a controller vibration, and it makes like a higher pitched noise whenever it's running. That's really about it for the physical aspect of it. Um, oh yeah, so I'd like to talk a little bit about how to pair this thing. So to pair this, you actually go to the change grip slash order page menu. And then you want to hold the sync button at the back. You might have to press A or something while it's syncing. I don't really remember how it worked. Uh, but basically you press the sync button and it should detect on the switch. The good news is that after you pair it, you don't have to go to that page again. Uh, whenever the switch is on, you just have to hold the plus and the home button at the same time, which should turn on the controller, and it should detect the switch, and you should be good to go. You cannot turn on the switch with the controller, unfortunately, so you will have to turn on the switch first before turning on the controller. The battery life I found to be excellent. Uh, I play lightly, don't really game for long sessions, Maybe a few hours a day at most. I can comfortably use this thing for well over a week without charging. Sometimes even two weeks. I don't even remember the last time I charged this thing. The company claims it can go up to about 22 hours or so. And based off my experience so far, I think that's very believable. The connection to the Switch is also very stable. And I haven't experienced any drops or issues throughout the time that I've had it. Uh, however... When using the controller, I do feel like there's a tiny, tiny bit of input lag. Uh, like, it's almost minuscule, but I can still feel that it's there. It's not really something that I have the tools to measure and stuff, uh, but when using the official Switch, Joy-Cons for example, it does feel slightly more responsive. Uh, but I feel like the input lag is so minuscule that I think most people won't even really notice it. and. Uh, I don't think it will affect your gameplay that much, but it is something that I just kind of notice when using this controller. So I think that's about it for this controller. I think for the money I paid and how much this controller costs on Amazon, sometimes even cheaper than what I bought it at, it's an excellent budget controller and a good value. This would make a great controller to buy just to have as a backup or one that you have lying around in case like a friend comes over or something and you want to play some Switch. It has great build quality, great battery life, uh, it's wireless, has USB-C charging, and overall it's just a very comfortable and good feeling controller. So I think that about wraps it up for this review. Thanks for watching, and uh, cut.